All right. Hello, everyone. Happy Friday. Welcome to Automation Hour. If you're joining us for the first time, all lines will be muted. Please post your questions to our Trailblazer Community Salesforce Automation Hour, or you can post them here in the webinar. Um, sometime after the session, we will post the link to the recording as well as the deck out on our YouTube channel, Salesforce Automation Hour, as well as our website, automationhour.com and our Trailblazer community, and we will be communicating that out via uh, Twitter and LinkedIn as well. If you haven't signed up for our future sessions, I highly recommend it. Even if you can't attend live, you'll get a notice that um, the recording is posted. Um, we have some great first-time presenters, MVPs, returning presenters, just people passionate about automation, talking about all sorts of different use cases and cool automation solutions for that. So um, please sign up on automationhour.com. And we can't bring this webinar series to you, free webinar series, without our sponsor, Concrete IO. So thank you, thank you, thank you for continuing to sponsor us. All right, and here are your co-hosts, David, myself, and Rakesh. Um, I also want to take a couple of minutes to share um, some personal news. So he, this is going to be my last automation hour that I'll be facilitating as um, I will be stepping down from my co-hosting co activities. So I do want to thank Rakesh um, for just being a friend all these years and for inviting me on to this journey with you as you came up with the idea of providing a forum where people can really knowledge share about automation. I can't believe that it's been um, since 2016, five years since we've launched this little webinar series of ours. So um, I, I really want to thank you for your friendship, for your mentorship. Um, you were one of the people that I learned automation from. So um, I really want to thank you for that. And I also want to thank you, the audience, for your support throughout the years, for this five years. Um, thanks for sharing with me how the series has helped you. It truly gives me trail heart and I will miss all of you, but we'll be watching Automation Hour as a participant. Excited to see what cool solutions people will share. And who knows, I might be back as a guest presenter in the future. So as I close this chapter in my Salesforce career, another one begins and I'll be excited to share with you my new adventure in the next few days. So stay tuned for that. And with that, I um, am excited to have Jack on. Um, he works for Elements Cloud, and Ian has talked up Jack for several years, and we're able to finally get him on. Um, so I'm happy to have him on on my last automation hour. So with that, let me um, flip it over to Jack. So Jack, you should have control. Uh, I do. Let's make sure we got the right screen. There you go. So you should be seeing my Salesforce, correct? Yes. I can't see the slide deck. One second, sorry. I can build flow and I'm a half decent business analyst, but I can't work go to webinar. <laughs> <laughs> We just get the uh, my slide deck. I'm sorry. One second. No worries. Here we go. Okay, so thanks, Jen. Um, appreciate the opportunity and obviously good luck with your uh, future ventures uh, moving forward. From what, I, what I've heard from me and you guys have done a terrific job in terms of building automation out up, up from, the, from the ground. So I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, no pressure being your last one, but I'll, I'll try my best. A um, little bit about myself before I go into uh, the presentation around the automation and, and, and what I do. Um, so as Jen mentioned, yeah, I work for elements.cloud. 
Um, I wear several hats, which some of you guys probably do as well. So my official job title is that I'm a business excellence manager. Um, I'm also an accidental admin. I'm a Salesforce business analyst. I'm a product owner. Uh, I fall under a wide umbrella. Um, so I have a fair um, experience across all Salesforce platforms. Um, I tend to do a little bit of blogging here and there when I have time. That's my uh, Medium account. Trailhead Ranger, 168 badges. Uh, I've been in the Salesforce ecosystem for just over three years now. Um, I've got to that Ranger status in about six months. Uh, as I mentioned, Accent to Admin, basically starting my new role and my boss, the COO, said, Jack, his Salesforce, his Trailhead, learn it. So I did that inside six months, which I'm pretty proud of. Um, a little quote there, build the right thing. Uh, build the thing right. Um, I'll go into a bit more detail with, with that as part of my presentation. Um, but that's a motto I try to live by in terms of building automation and obviously other things inside Salesforce as well. Um, active user on Twitter at JackSFAdmin. Happy to connect with anybody, you know, share experiences, um, share tips, automation, be it all things Salesforce. Uh, LinkedIn again, active user. I put some of my posts on there as well. Again, happy to collaborate with everyone. Um, I don't have a personal website, but I do have my own page on our company website, elements.cloud forward slash Jack. It's basically a 25 minute video of a day in the life of me as a Salesforce staff member and a Salesforce business analyst, taking you right through my cycle in terms of the implementation life cycle. So straight from feedback, build, test, document, release. So there's a little 25 minute video of me on there. I'm um, just explaining what I do in a bit more detail. Um, so that's me, um, really short agenda. Um, I'm going to talk about a bit, a bit around want versus need. So this is around stakeholder management when it comes to building automation. Um, this quote, build the thing right. Uh, sorry, yeah, sorry, build the right thing, build the thing right. This is what I try to live by, get a little bit more information around this. And then I'm going to take you through a live demo in my org um, of basically how to build uh, an automation log using flow. Um, so it's basically a flow slash process builder log of when uh, a flow last ran, the record it ran on, some detailed logging, etc. Um, so I'll take you through that in a bit more detail as well. Um, so want versus need, uh, what does it mean? I think this this caption here kind of sums it up really well. And again, I imagine some of you listening to this have been in this position. Uh, quite a funny quote, I'll go up and find out what they need and the rest of you start coding. <laughs> so it's very much, um, just build, 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 build. We'll build what we need to build. Um, we don't know exactly what the stakeholder needs, but we'll build it anyway. Um, and this is where I want to introduce the whole want versus need, which is what I try to bring in when I'm building, particularly automation, because it can get really messy. So stakeholder management as a Salesforce admin or analyst, it's, it's a really tough world. Um, how many times have you delivered something the stakeholder wants rather than what the business actually needs? Um, how many times have you delivered a want and noticed really poor adoption? I think that's the biggest thing and the most frustrating thing as somebody that builds automation on process builder on flow on apex is you build it, you spend hours building it, you just spend hours testing it, you document it and then suddenly you have really poor adoption. Why is that? Now, I dug a little bit deeper and as, as a previous, as a business analyst in a previous life, so away from Salesforce completely, um, want versus need very much comes through the practice of business analysis. So asking why. So uh, an exec comes to you saying that, Jack, we need to do this. Well, why do you need to do this? Is this what you want? It's not what you need. Um, I tend to live off five whys. The five whys then get me to a business requirement and then suddenly, you're building the right thing. You're building a need rather than a want. Um, and that's that's what I try to live by when I'm building my automation. If you build it right the first time, you don't have to go back and undo, you know, hours and hours of work on this, particularly on Flow Builder, it can be really difficult to tidy up something that's not being built particularly well. And it's always nice to see adoption of what you've built as well, because you get a little bit of a, a pat on the back from yourself and from from your from your users as well if you're building it right the first time and you, you've obviously built their confidence in you as well. Um, so that's a really short piece on want versus need. Um, now this is the really interesting thing around building the right thing, build a thing right. Now it can get it's quite a confusing statement, um, 
And this is basically the implementation lifecycle. So starting from box number one, you capture ideas and feedback from your users. Um, you then start to define business outcomes, which is box two. And this is where your business analysis starts around the build of the automation. Um, you get requirements from this, so business requirements. You can get process diagrams, so you can build it into the operational processes. You build an ERD, so you know the data you're affecting before you build your automation, automation which is really important. Because if you don't know your data model, what I tend to find is that I've built all this really great automation, but I don't know... I know where it's touching, but it's a really cloudy view um, of where I'm touching my org. And autom automation, as you guys know, it's like a spider web. It can just grow and grow and grow, and suddenly you're going really deep. And without an ERD or a data model, it's really hard to understand. You can get lost over what particular objects you're touching and fields, etc. Um, once you've got your ERD, you can then start building user stories. So how to build it. Uh, you can define the impact and the risk. Again, this is really important around automation especially if you're updating particular flows and particular process builders, you need to know the risk to the business if you're changing particular uh, fields, for example. Updating a pick list field in, in Salesforce sounds really simple. If that pick list field is embedded inside a flow, you've then got to go back into your flow and update the pick list values if, if need be, depending on how you built the flow with variables, etc. So you need to know the risk and the impact of the actual change itself and, and the new build. And then all documentation, really important. Why did you build it? Test it. Is it working? Release it. And again, that, that's one big cycle. The users use it again and you get feedback and you start again. This is the loop and the process I tend to follow when building automation. Okay, so we're now going to get into the live demo. So how to actually build an automation log using flow and process build. Now, this is a really, really simple flow. Um, you're all probably really familiar with this screen. Uh, this is basically the pause and fail flow interviews. Um, now, naturally, we all want to start building right, building right away. It's exciting. You want to get your teeth into it. This particular screen got me thinking one day. So in terms of use case, so my boss came to me and said, Jack, we're missing data from a really key object. Um, are the flows running? Is the automation running? Are the process builders triggering the flows? What's going on? Because we're missing really key data. I did a bit of a Google search. What could actually help me inside the org? And I came to this particular screen here. Now, this is great, but the information is extremely minimal. Uh, I find it quite difficult to read, and it actually doesn't tell us much worthwhile information. It tells us when the flow ran, the time it ran you know, the flow version, what type of flow it is, who it's being modified by, et cetera. But I wanted to go a little bit deeper than that. I wanted to understand the, the actual record it ran on. I wanted to understand um, how many times it's ran. I want to understand the adoption of a new flow. And this didn't quite tell me that information. So I wanted to go a little bit deeper. So this is the use case around why I built what I'm about to present. Um, it also helps open up deeper conversations around needing if there is no adoption. And I, I, I'm really focused on adoption here because it's particularly frustrating. As I mentioned previously, when you build something and it's not being adopted, it's not being used. This flow that I'm about to show you in the objects, etc., cetera, in the records, it opens up a conversation with your users of why aren't you using this? You know, you ask for this, we went through the ERD, et cetera, but why are you not using this? Is it too difficult to use? Um, is it not meeting your needs? Do we need to go back and rethink it? Um, so yeah, this, this, part, this part of the process is really important. Okay, so going back to the build the thing right, build the right thing, a big, a big part of that was the data model. Now this looks really simple. This is just two objects that I need to build in order to meet my business requirement of understanding when a flow was built, sorry, when a flow was triggered, how many times it's been triggered, where it's touched, et cetera. So before I build anything, I want to know the data that's gonna be affected. So I know I need these two new objects. So it's a process builder logs object and a process builder log items object. Relationship, a process builder log can have zero or many log items because you can log many different items against a particular flow or process builder. And a process builder log item can only be attached to one particular flow. 
a mandatory one, which is really important when we come to build. So going into the org and actually looking at what this what this flow and, and records, et cetera, looks like. So we're now in my Salesforce org here. This is inside the process builder logs um, object. Really simply list view, uh, sorry, list view uh, display. So you've got the process builder log name, when it was last run and the count of when it was run. So how many times, this is basically a total number of how many times this flow has been, or process builder has been triggered inside the org. I want to look particularly um, at the uh, create opportunity from account, which I believe has run 61 times, which is this flow here. Okay, now really simple information currently. We can you can build on this obviously as you as you if you want to dive any deeper. Process builder flow name, when it was last run, how many times it's run, and detailed logging. Now, detailed long is logging. Sorry, is basically um, a checkbox which allows you to log more additional information about this particular flow when when it was last run. So that could be record. Um, that could be uh, if it was ran uh, off the back of a particular field, for example. Uh, who ran it? Um, a description of why it was ran. So that you can get more information in here. Related list, so this is all the log items. If detailed logging is checked, you can then start to build log items, which are your additional information. So again, as I mentioned, what record it was run on, for example. I'm now gonna run this particular flow here. So create opportunity from account. It's ran 61 times. We're now gonna make that 62. So I'm on an account, I'm on the elements.cloud account inside the org. I'm going to go to create opportunity here. Now this is all run from another flow, which I'll show you shortly because it's an important part of the process. I'm going to create an initial opportunity. Brilliant. <laughs> this will work. I tested it before we uh... There you go. It's going to be US dollar, really simple. Uh, we're not going to add any products for the moment because this is purely a demo. We're going to hit next. We've now got an opportunity here. If we go back to this particular log item and hit refresh, that now moves to 62. So it's ran for a 60 second time. Uh, it's ran that. This is my local time uh, on the date. Uh, detailed logging would have created a new log here, which is 310. I'll take you into there to give you an idea of what you can log. Now, for this particular example, I haven't actually asked for any additional information. Um, I'll take you into the flow where you can add particular information, but for this flow, I just want to know how many times it's ran and, and when it last ran for, for data purposes. Okay, so the flow itself. Now, I said this is really simple. Um, and it really, it really is. So this is the update PB log flow. So this is the flow that basically creates the uh, log item record. It creates the log itself. Um, it updates the record if you are um, for the incremental count, which is this thing here. Uh, and finally, this is the flow that is to be used for a subflow for the flows that you want this to be cooked for the flow. Sorry, you want to log the items on. So I'm going to take you through step by step. It's really simple. So we've got a get record here. Um, all we're going to do is we're going to get the uh, process builder log object, which is this here. So these are all the, the, the process builders or flows that I'm wanting to be logged. From there, we're going to get the name. We're going to assign it a value of PB type. Um, and from there, we're then going to get the count, the detailed logging and the ID fields for further reference. Decision, if the count is null, so if there is no count, so it hasn't been ran before, that's true. We're going to create a new record. So we're going to create a new process builder log record. We can then obviously start logging against that flow. We're going to assign the count to one. So it's ran for the first time. Last run, current date time out of the flow name the pb type the variable we got from the record at the very beginning i'm just going to store the record id under that information as well 
if detailed logging is required, Boolean variable, really simple. If equals true, you're then going to create a log item, which is the related object on the process builder log. So it's a really, really simple thing to do. Additional information you know, is under additional info. That's, that's a simple variable. Again, date, time, record ID for the process builder log. So it then creates the connection between the two objects. You can see the related list on the related list, sorry. Uh, in terms of if you're running the flow for the 60 second time, as we've just done, all we're doing is re-incrementing the count. So rather than looking at it being null, so if it's not null, so if it's greater than zero, we're just going to add one to the value every time. So you go one, two, three, four, for example, if it runs for a 63rd time, you're adding one to 62 being 63. So really simple. We're updating that count on the process builder log record. And again, with the time it was last run. So that's the basic, this is really basic flow. Now this can be, this can be um, developed a lot further. Um, I only tend to use this for troubleshooting um, data errors. So why isn't data being populated as part of an automation? Is the flow running? That's all I particularly use this for. I use it again to help me monitor adoption. So why aren't people using it? If people are using it, what do they like about it? What, why are they using this flow more? Other flow is a part of the process, for example. And again, it helps open up that deeper conversation around adoption. But again, this can be developed a lot further. Now, you'll notice in my list, so these are my process builder logs. So at the moment, I'm only actually logging 21 flows and, and process builders. You can put this flow as a subflow into any process builder or any flow depending obviously on DML operators and limits, etc., because you don't want to crash the flow itself if you've got to call another subflow. Um, I tend to use the, uh, I wouldn't call them, I'd probably call them the most urgent in terms of uh, high risk data and also uh, high risk priority and impact. So I use the flows that are going to affect us operationally if they're not working or if the data is not coming through or if the users are constantly hitting errors, for example. So I tend to monitor those particular flows. By all means, you can put this into every single flow or process builder in your um, or to monitor count, etc. if you really wanted to. So this is another flow. So this is that create opportunity from account. So taking you back to the initial uh, beginning of the process in this particular flow here that I've just built with screen uh, as a screen flow. That is this flow here. Now, what I've done to embed this uh, PB log and to get the information out of it is I've really simply at the end of every lineal process, I've put the subflow of update PB log. Don't need additional information on this particular case, so I've put don't include. And all I'm doing is I'm bringing the name through create opportunity from account. So at the end of this, if, if it takes this particular path, the last thing it's going to do is it's going to run this flow here. To either update the current log or create a new log or a new log item if needed. And again, at the end of this particular path, again, I don't, I'm not requesting any additional information, but again, I am going to pass through the name so I know that this flow as run in this particular instance. So that's how you're doing it in terms of embedding it into a process, into a flow, sorry. In terms of the process builder, uh, again, really simply, there's the log there. So this is a validation of renewal process builder. Um, gets the record type. If it's true, I want to call this particular flow. Again, all I'm bringing through is the name, so the process field of validation of renewal, uh, which we'll see there. So that's run 629 times, and it was last run in June, uh, 11th of June, which was the day, I believe. And again, that's really simple and an immediate action. So as long as you build this particular flow correctly, you can then use it in subflows on, on, on other flows that you want to monitor. You can use it in process builders that you want to monitor in terms of, again, adoption um, or any other usage that you feel it necessary for. Um, final part of my particular presentation um, is around 
how can you develop this further? So I, I've taken a really pragmatic and simple approach to this purely because my use case was really pragmatic and simple. And the initial requirement was all I want to know is if this flow has run. Now, you can develop this a lot further in terms of the data you're actually getting from the uh, flows itself and what you can actually bring through is pretty powerful. Um, so, I mean, you can create reports, you can create dashboards, you can create user adoption or adoption metrics. Suddenly you're getting a massive insight in your org around flow and around automation that you've probably never had before, um, which could be extremely powerful um, for any Salesforce admin, for a development team, um, even for the execs, I mean, if it, and, and, and the sales guys. Um, the the additional information which i don't particularly um i should probably use more to be honest but i don't particularly use it because again my use case isn't substantial enough to warrant it um but if we look at this one here i believe there's one particular flow that we use here i think it's this one yeah so this is run 518 times and we've got all of these log items here. So this particular flow is around our license type. So we need to know if this is run for license provisioning for our software. So the additional information is key here. So I know this flow ran on the 26th of May, that tends to, and it ran on this particular space. Now the space is a custom object. So I know it ran on this particular record. So in terms of data and in terms of knowing if our licenses are provisioned, this is where additional information could really come in handy. And this is the biggest part of my use case. And my boss, Adrian, funny enough, said, look, my, uh, what's going on? The data is not coming through. And I could quite confidently, because I have this log saying, well, uh, it did. And it came through at this particular time on this record. Um, so it can become really powerful for any Salesforce admin or business analyst or product owner around flow and automation to know it's definitely run. Um, but this is where you could really grow the flow around the additional information, just to get more, more out from the flow and more out from the record if you really wanted to. Um, a little bit shorter than 40 minutes, I do apologize, um, but I, I kind of had a, had a batter in my mind around value versus complexity. I could have showed you a much more complex flow, but I found value in this particular use case to be very high. I use this daily. Um, so yeah, I pre appreciate your time guys and, and thanks for having me again. Jen, over right. to you. Sure, thanks Jack. So if you have any questions related to Jack's presentation, you can post it here. You can also post it out on our Trailblazer Community Salesforce Automation Hour, or it could be a general automation question that you have. So we do have a question from Michelle for you, Jack. Mm. Um, how would you expect to use this on the new flow types that don't allow subflows to be called? Or is it just a wait until the functionality is available <laughs> thing? <laughs> well, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you, yeah, Michelle has answered the question there. It is a wait until uh, the functionality is available, unfortunately. Um, because it, it, this does rely on, on, on a subflow being able to be called in terms of how I, how I built it in this particular case. Um, so yeah, Michelle, you've answered your own question there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, see if folks have additional questions. Um, so while we wait for people to type in their questions, um, what, What's a recent um, Salesforce flow feature or upcoming spring 21 feature that you're looking forward to? Um, I, to be honest with you, I think the, the it's actually something that's come more recently, not something that's, that's actually come uh, or is upcoming. What I really mm -hmm. like, because uh, I, I, I've worked on the older flow, the, the, the user interface in terms of, um, compared to what the old flow looked like. This is 10 mm -hmm. times better. Mm -hmm. um, what I'd absolutely love is, I work on a process mapping tool. Um, so I, I find this, uh, the user face is great, but I find it extremely clunky. 
Um, and sometimes to reorder stuff is really difficult. Like this flow here, for example, and moving some of this stuff around, it can just become a, a real mess. <laughs> um, so I find that a bit of a, a bit of a pain. But in terms of, um, especially around the new flow type, so I really like the so a lot a lot of the work we've done around process builder, and um, we use webhooks um, and platform events. So I really like the new platform event flows that you can call. Um, yeah, there's a lot there's a lot coming up that I'm excited about as well around flow, and it's it's kind of a from, from my personal point of view, it's more of a dip your toe in and see how you go. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and it's a I'm not going to I'm not the most experienced person in flow but I can I can handle myself and it's I, I'm very much well we'll see what happens you know I do my prior planning I do my analysis I know what I need to build and then I'll just let myself go and I can do this for hours <laughs> mm -hmm. cool all right we do have some questions here um Michelle again, um, mm. have you used these logs to generate any reports or dashboards related to adoption or user metrics on the automations you built? Any thoughts about doing that? I haven't to date. Um, it's something I would absolutely love to do. And I'd, I'd, if you're going to use this particular tool, I'd recommend doing it. Um, because as I mentioned as part of the presentation, I think that the hardest thing I find um, is when you you know you, 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 I, I spend you can spend hours and i take pride in these particular flows and when you have really poor adoption and you i know i get poor adoption because in terms of when i release a particular flow you know i like to engage my users i ask for feedback you know how's it going are you using it and a lot of the time it's oh i haven't used it yet or i'm not really too sure how to use it or can you provide more user help um, and i think having a dashboard and reports would really um uh emphasize if you like uh what what flows are being used and again you can open up that conversation well why aren't you using this one why is this one more popular if it's used if it's part of the same process why are you using this flow more is it because there's screens in there is it you know is it more step by step it's easier to use um so i would i'd, I'd love to build reports and dashboards on this um i'll be completely honest i haven't had the time recently <laughs> Um, but it is in terms of the next release, it's, it's where I want to take it next. So, you, you know, you could have a really cool dashboard, which is a user adoption dashboard. You could have a particular um, report on that dashboard, which shows, you know, your poor users. You could have a lead table of users that are using the automation as they should be and others that are just, you know, they're trying to negatively avoid the automation or the automation because they're scared of using it or they don't understand to use it. So. In answer to your question, Michelle, I've gone the long way around. <laughs> um, <laughs> reports and dashboards, really good idea. I'd love to do it. Um, and yeah, they were my thoughts, thoughts around doing it. Cool. All right. Next question is from Robert. Mm. Process builder log, I'm assuming, is a custom object he built to capture the info? Correct. Yeah. So the process builder log, complete custom object, um, as, lot, as well as the uh, related the process builder log items. Uh, again, this is really simple. So just coming back off of Michelle's initial question, you can grow this a lot further. So really simple fields, log name, a date field for, and a date and time field for his last run, the count field, which is just a number field if you like, a checkbox, and that's all I needed. So yes, it's two custom objects, and I think there's about eight custom fields, if that, to be honest. All right. Um, just a reminder to folks, if you have any additional questions related to Jack's presentation or overall um, automation question, you can ask it here. Uh, Michelle just gave a comment. P.S. This is pretty fantastic and mm. I'd love to implement this in my own org. Thanks for presenting. No, it was a pleasure. And I hope, you know, I hope you get the use out of it that I do. And if you do, if you do develop it further, because you could go a long way with this and, you know, by all means, I'd love to, I'd love to share that with you. Great. So while we're waiting to see if we have any more questions, um, Jack, what what would you um, provide in terms of advice for people starting out in Flow? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> um, I think my first 
a uh, bit of advice is probably don't be scared of it um, mm -hmm. because I think um, flow wrongly has a stigma of um, okay it's a point and click tool but it's, it feels more like uh, programming than process builder mm -hmm. um, but if you think of it as a I mean when, when I first started for example I just thought of it as a process map it's very very logical okay it looks scary and there's variables and there's formulas that you can do and you can add screens and you can add subflows and it can all get very confusing but it's actually really logical just follow it like a process map like a path that you're going through in your own head but you're just documenting it in terms of a flow so i think my, my biggest bit of advice would be don't be scared of it and my second bit would be just it's, it's extremely logical and just follow it like you would a, 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 as a process map if you like Okay, um, Robert says, I'm new to learning flows. Do you have a flow deck details posted someplace for us to review and build the flow log on our own? Uh, I do, yes. Yeah. So on my um, blog, uh, which is, uh, actually, it's probably better to go here. So if you go to my Twitter, uh, look at my posts. I did a blog on the process builder log and a step by step of how to build it. Um, so that would be your best bet. So go to at Jackass Jack SF admin, follow me, you don't have to if you don't want to. Um, <laughs> and I post on there a step by step of how to build this. Um, so that's the that's where you'll find that information. And that'll take you through the variables individually, you know, what why I why I assign these variables, why I need those variables. It's very much a beginner's guide um, because I was very conscious that when I first started using Flow that, that there was really helpful resource out there, but a lot of the resources I'd say for your uh, intermediate to advanced level, mm -hmm. um, I didn't particularly find Trailhead extremely helpful when it came to Flow. It was more of a, like I said, dip your toe into the water. Um, so I tried my best when I first started to start blogging really, really simple instructions so other people could start, you know, having a go at it and, and seeing what they could build. So, yeah, uh, Robert, go to Jack as, at Jack SF admin and just look through my previous posts and there's, there's plenty of plenty of posts on there around how to build it. All right. Um, Margo asks, will this presentation be available to review later? So, yes. We will um, post it out on our YouTube channel, Salesforce Automation Hour. It will also be posted out on our website, automationhour.com, as well as the Trailblazer Community Salesforce Automation Hour. So we'll um, give it one last um, round of any additional questions from um, folks, again, on Jack's presentation or any general automation question and so any um new flows upcoming cool flows that you're working on jack uh yeah so um Elements.cloud, part, part, part of the fun of working for them is that they're, we're, we're technically classed as a startup, so we're ever evolving, we're very agile. Um, and a lot of our flows that we build tend to be around the opportunity account managers um, and how they manage opportunities, etc. Um, and one of the requirements that's come through recently is um, they want to be able to, to we, Salesforce has obviously got a standard discounting. Um, in terms of when you add a product, you can add a percentage discount, but the requirements are a bit more detailed than that. You know, they want to be able to discount individual product uh, products. They want to discount the whole opportunity by different percentages by product line. Um, they want to be able to discount by percent. They want to be able to discount by monetary value, euros and Canadian dollars and dollars and great British pounds. Um, so something that's coming up very, very shortly is we're, we're going to try and build our own discounting tool. Mm -hmm. um, and funnily enough, one of the biggest challenges we've had um, is the decimal places in Salesforce. It keeps missing out by about 5p. 
<laughs> or is it five cents in America? <laughs> um, so yes, I'm re really excited about that. Actually, it's, it's going to be probably the biggest challenge I've undertaken in terms of flow because it's going to. I imagine there's going to be formulas, there's going to be conversion around currency conversion, um, you know, percentage value to number conversion. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. And again, I'll be I'll be blogging that and documenting that across Twitter as well. Um, it's something I like to do. I like to share, you know, the, the cool things we're doing at Elements in terms of flow. Mm -hmm. All right, we do have another question that came in. Um, can you also catch any error messages as additional information? Uh, okay, so when I when I sat down to build this, um, I, 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 I may be one of the rare ones, but I actually find the Salesforce flow errors that come through from Salesforce themselves or hit my Gmail inbox to be quite useful. Um, so in yeah, when what do you mean by, I mean, errors? Is it a, uh, a runtime error? So for example, um, I don't know, uh, you haven't set a particular uh, variable at an earlier stage in the flow, for example, uh, because I actually found when building this that the errors I got from the Salesforce themselves in terms of the, the, the errors that hit my Gmail inbox to be quite valuable. Um, so I didn't build it into this particular release, if you like. Um, but I mean, that additional information field is a text field. So in theory, if you can, you know, if you can capture the record ID, etc., cetera, um, you could probably write the error to another field and then populate that into the additional information. Um, but that is again creating another custom field, which you know it's not complex, but it's, it could potentially be tech debt in the future. Um, but that additional information field is your play area, if you like. So that's where you can anything you can extract out of Salesforce, you can put it in terms of text. You can put it into that additional information field. So short answer to your question is yes, you probably can, but no, I haven't done it myself. Mm -hmm. because I was using the Salesforce errors. Yeah, now with the additional enhancements of like in the email, you can now click on a link that takes you right exactly. into Flow Builder where the error is. I think that's yeah. just like a lot of data to help you figure yeah. it out. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And I, I find that really useful actually, those, those Salesforce errors. All right, Kenny has a question. Can this tool be used as a debugging tool? For example, I might want to know which subflows a particular record hit. Uh, good question. Um, I can't, uh, can I have more time to think about that? <laughs> it's a really good question. And to be honest with you, I think I'd actually like to invest, I'd like to explore that further myself because this, this is a problem I'm having in terms of, um, okay, so my, 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 my immediate response would be, why would you want to use it as a debug debugging tool if, when you, you when you can debug in the flow user for interface itself i may have misunderstood your question kenny but i don't understand why you'd want to use it as a debug tool if you can use debug in the interface and then that would show you the record that's hit a particular subflow so let's see if kenny can elaborate <laughs> <laughs> let's see if kenny can elaborate on that um Michelle says, I think you'd be able to grab the record ID of any record that is updated or created by the flow, store that in a record variable, mm -hmm. and then put it into the log record. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, Kenny comes back. Great, good response. Sometimes auto launch flows are difficult to debug. Mm -hmm. Example, launched by external updates, but agree that standard flow debug should be useful in most cases. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I'd actually really like, I, I, can, I, can, I can completely see why you'd want to use it as a debugging tool. 
but yeah i'd like i'd actually i'm going to investigate that further myself because it like you said there kenny with the with the um, external updates and auto launch debugging can be a real pain um yeah okay that's that's yeah thanks for that bit of feedback kenny. i'm going gonna, I'm gonna to investigate that further myself I mean, it's just another example of, of you know how, how far you can take this particular I, i've got it off the ground if you like it's there yeah. it's born, but you could take it really far um so melinda commented you can't use debug feature for the record triggered flow um melinda just so you know upcoming in summer 21 you will have that capability All right, last call for any additional questions folks might have. All right, Siraj says, sometimes the case is that if a flow had failed at a certain point, the user may have done a workaround as impacted a business outcome and it may have only be on that particular record and by the time too late to debug in flow builder okay so let me just read that something <laughs> our user workarounds we all love them don't we <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is so this is this is uh, emphasizing on I think Kenny's point in terms of using it as a debug tool, um, especially around the additional information. Um, and uh, yeah, I, again, I I, I'm, I am going to investigate that further because it would be really really useful um, as a debug tool. There's not really much as I can I can I can grow on that particular comment. All right, let me go check the Trailblazer community, see if anyone's posted there. All right, it doesn't look like there's anything out there. All right, final call. <laughs> <laughs> feel like I'm working at a bar. Final call for drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Get your orders a, in. To say what, what's a bar? I haven't been in a bar. For... <laughs> yeah, right. What's a bar? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So it doesn't look Thanks. like we have any additional questions. <laughs> Thanks, Jane. Thanks for hosting Automation Hours for so many years. Oh, thanks, Rakesh. Yeah, I'm going to miss everybody, but I'll be participating. Mm -hmm. You'll see my name in the attendees list going forward. <laughs> and we're going to love you, Hab, as you present to. Yes. <laughs> All right. And thanks, Jack, for finally coming yeah, on to present. Um, and no I hope to see you again on Automation Hour in the future. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, you know, I appreciate you letting me take up an hour of all of your time. Um, and I really hope it was, it was worthwhile. So yeah, thank you again. Great. Thanks everybody. And we will be posting the recording and uh, the link to the deck um, sometime after the session. So thanks and we'll talk to you later. Bye.